Okay, people, come on, let's go, let's move it, move it! We got a war to win out there! Optimus, Rodimus, I need you to start leading the troops better! What are you doing for the war effort, cameraman? I saw that! Hello, everybody, Sparkster1701 here. We're now into our third week of Pretender Month, and we're taking a look at a rather rare toy in the collection. This time around, it's the Autobot Ground and Air Assault Warrior, Skyhammer. Skyhammer would come out in 1989 and would only be available in 1989. He would be discontinued by 1990, and we would not get a replacement for him. Skyhammer is one of the Ultra Pretenders that was released very late in the line. This would be the only Autobot Ultra Pretender. His Decepticon counterpart, Roadblock, will be reviewed next week. An Ultra Pretender is, an evolu is a slight evolution from the Mega Pretenders in the form of the fact that the humanoid shell does have the ability to transform, but it has the added advantage of it has a larger vehicular shell that the entire toy can be stored in. The major problem with these toys is that at the time of their release, they were made of this gold plastic. As you can see, there's a lot of gold plastic, and you'll see more of it as we get further into the video. So naturally, what makes these toys very, very rare is the fact that the plastic is very easily broken over time. And while this toy here isn't perfect, it is in very reasonable condition for one of its age. So let's start by taking a look at what exactly we've got here with this toy. First off, we will take a look here at the robot himself. This is Skyhammer. As you can see, he is probably very notorious to find, as his entire body is made of the gold plastic, but so are his feet. But this is the actual interior robot. And given his size, he just stands just barely above the original mini-vehicle toys from the early 1980s. So he's only slightly taller than them, but yet he would have cost considerably more due to the larger Pretender shells. For articulation, he's got about what you would expect for a toy of his size. Meaning that we can turn his arms at the shoulders all the way around, and we can bend his legs at the hip, all the way up. And of course, you can also bend his leg at the ankle. So you can make him some sort of weird looking rocket dancer. <laughs> okay, now comes the next part that really suffers because of the way this toy is designed, is to transform him into his alternate mode. Of course, to start on that, first we remove his gun. Then next, we got to rotate his arms up to put them up in an I Surrender pose. We come down here, we fold his feet down, and we fold his legs up and onto his chest. And then for a final touch, we can reattach the gun into his chest, and he becomes an armored car. That's what it says in the instructions, folks. I ain't making this up. But doesn't he just look silly? 
Now let's see how well he rolls. We've got to be careful with him. I don't want him falling on the floor and breaking on us here. And he rolls pretty good. So at least he does have that going for him, but let's be honest, folks. This mode looks stupid. Next up, we're going to show you how to make the robot be able to ride an attack form of his jet mode. This, of course, is the large outer shell. And let's take a look at it real quick. We'll go over it slowly here. Right here is the front area where it opens up at. And of course, we've got a nice big blue gun here up front. And as you can see, it turns 180 degrees, so you got nice coverage with it. And as you can see, the lower half of this vehicle is made of the gold plastic, so always handle this with care. Down here on the bottom, we do have, surprisingly, some nice detail work here. So this was in an age when quite a few of the G.I. Joe toys at the time that were being released at the same time were lacking a lot of detail here on the bottom of the toys. So to see it being brought in for a Transformer this late in the game is kind of nice. And of course, as you can see, the airplane here is a VTOL style as we got the fan jets here and they do... They do spin by themselves. You just gotta stick your fingers in there to get them to do anything. So they're not gonna spin much. Nice action feature for that would have been nice. And of course we got the tail section here. This would also be a spot prone to breakage since as you can see from this angle the plastic is very thin on these tail fins. So you got a lot to look for on this. But of course, the most likely damaged spot on this is right here in the front. This one right here, this spot here is broken a little bit. This is the only broken spot on this toy. So as you can see, this one, this was taken care of very well by its previous owner. I bought this at a toy show about seven years ago. This was one of my this was my big purchase that year. When I first did the adult collecting. So to find one like this, this was a treat. Unfortunately, it's taken me so long to review it because I only just this year finally obtained his tech specs. Now to make the jet ready for to occupy the robot on it. First thing we got to do is we take these two golden weapons and they get attached here to the holes underneath the wings just exactly like that and of course the little robot's blue gun will connect right here into this hole on the tail section And then next, this middle portion we can raise up, and we fold out another gun. And of course, down inside here, there's a couple of little posts. You can probably just barely make out the one. And those are basically where the holes in the robot's feet can stand on. Just push them on gently, so you don't break him. And then there you go. He can stand on there and fire the cannon. Now the problem with this is, is it's kind of stupid to have the tail lead, have the his own gun mounted back here like that, because he's basically going to shoot himself in the butt anytime it fires. He's going to get shot in the butt. I think Hasbro would have been better off telling us to position the gun like that so at least he could shoot anybody that's coming up from behind him but i think they more wanted us to have more would have wanted us kids back then to have more fun and shoot himself in the butt you may laugh now 
All right, one last transformable feature, and that is to transform the shell, the interior shell, into its alternate mode. And of course, first thing we're going to do is we got to put his arms up into the I Surrender pose. Well, before we do that, let's have a good look at the shell. Then we'll do the transformation. You guys should see the shell. This is a good time to look at it without anything else in our way. It's done up as kind of a spaceman look. We do have a visor that flips up. So you can take a look at how his face looks and... I don't think he looks all that comfortable in that suit, to be honest with you folks. He looks better like that. And of course, he famously has gold plastic here on his feet. And like the larger pretender shells, the articulation is solely in the arm. Rotate the arm all the way around like that. And of course, here's the back side of the shell. The shell opens up back here. So it flips out like so. We'll show how to get Skyhammer in there in a moment. But getting back on what we were doing, let's get him... Let's transform this into the alternate mode first again. Go with the I Surrender pose. Then we're going to knock the feet and knock the legs up like so. It's easy just to give them a good whack. Fold both halves of the feet together. Remember to be gentle. Then you're going to fold out these wings at his arms. We turn him around. We'll fold this piece out. And then, of course, we take the gold weapons and we just mount them onto the sides, like so. And then, of course, we can just sky hammer here so he's in a seated position. And then just gently wiggle him down inside the cockpit and there we go he is in jet mode <laughs> which kind of fits the aesthetic for a lot of science fiction toys at about the time he came out they were usually rather oversized and ridiculous looking since they had to be made for the figures to fit inside so they looked a little weird but you know, does swoosh not too bad of course if you're holding it like that you're going to rub against the visor so it may cause a little bit of a weird feeling but all in all it's not too bad of a play thing before we show how to get Skyhammer inside all of those shells, let's take a brief moment and look at the loose parts real fast. Especially since this is a good time to look at them. First of all is his wing laser. Which is almost bird-shaped in origin. It almost reminds me of the... Crane Ninja Zord from the from one of the old Power Rangers series. I know this because I recently bought a model kit of the Mega Ninja Falcon Zord. So I could almost see this being folded up into its head. Of course, it's hollow at the bottom. Just looks a little weird. And up here we got one of the part, the part that's not listed on the instructions. This is the visor to the Pretender shell. It's made of something of a hard plastic. It's predominantly hard in the middle, but it is a little soft at the edges, so it allows it to come off with relative ease. So you might want to be careful with that on a loose sample. It's got a couple of holes on the sides, and it clips onto a couple of pegs on the shell. And then, of course, probably some of the hardest accessories to find for Skyhammer are the two gold rockets. 
You know, these missiles are made totally of the gold plastic, so they will break very easily. So please do handle them with care. I would recommend that if you're not going to have the toy on display, you keep the missiles stored in a plastic baggie of some sort to protect them. I just dropped it, but it's fine. You can see, it's fine. Thankfully, there's carpet underneath the uh, underneath this table. And that's all the loose parts, save for the shells, but you've already had a good look at those. Okay, folks. Now let's uh, show you the part you've all been waiting for. How do we get him into that and then into the airplane? All right. It's pretty simple start off with, we fold down the robot's feet and raise his arms up into an I surrender pose. And next we bring over the humanoid shell and we just pop the back side open just like that. It goes all the way down then you just insert the robot in. Now why they say you need to have his arms up is beyond me, because as you can clearly see there, he doesn't fit. So some stupid idiot at Hasbro wrote the instructions wrong again. Alright, you just insert him in like so, and gently fold the back piece down onto him. And then, of course, if you're wanting to go ahead and start play, you would, of course, mount the gun, mount the missiles into his fists, like his, like he's using them as guns. Of course, remember, be careful, don't put too much stress on those. And then there you have it. He's been put inside the human shell. But then it becomes, what do you want to do when you want to get him into the airplane? Well, first of all, we take off the missiles. We're going to fold his arms down like so. And we're going to shorten his legs like that. Probably be a good idea as well to fold his feet up. And then we bring out the airplane and we gently open it up like so and he just rests inside face down like that then we simply lower it and close it very gently on top of him. And then of course to complete the look mount the wing laser back there now that he's not going to shoot the robot in the butt and reattach the missiles. And then there you have it. Skyhammer is ready to head out on adventures. So, next thing for us to do now is take a look at the instructions, and surprisingly, they are not as complicated as you would have expected for a toy like this. And we got the same kind of opening for a pretender. We see the interior shell, and they've got the robot mounted on the exterior shell. <coughs> Excuse me. All the pieces parts, save for the visor. Show how to arm the jet up. Then add the robot to it. How to arm Skyhammer himself. This is part of what makes it so simple is how to turn him into a car. They leave his legs, they leave his ankles out, but I think they should be folded up. But that's just my opinion, folks. And then how to hide him in the shell.
arm the figure. And then turn the figure into a jet. And then lastly, how to hide the figure inside the big jet. And then we get a large panel here to put the stickers on. And then lastly, the reminders to save your robot points and to read your tech specs. So, let's go ahead and do that now that we finally have the tech spec. It's done up here primarily in red to show he's an Autobot. And they've squeezed in an image of all the vehicles, all the alt modes. So we got the exterior shell opened up to let the jet out. And then we got the jet in the shell mode, robot mode, and the car mode. Of course, the car mode here looks significantly different than how he turns out. And, of course, the jet shell here has the gu front guns in red, whereas you can see on the toy they are blue. It gives his name as Skyhammer, and his function is ground and air assault. His motto is, there is no disgrace in succeeding, only in not trying. A valiant, vigilant warrior, dedicated to defending the innocent, Automated high-tech sky cruiser ideal for defending against enemy attack. Thermal blasters and wings liquefy metal on impact. Front-mounted high-frequency modulators provide long-range audio and video surveillance and tracking capabilities. Coolant vents in nose emit black clouds of sleep gas. And top-mounted turbofans can produce cyclonic wind funnels. Also armed with twin lightning bolt cannons and programmable steel-shattering sonic overloader. Outer shell armed with photon pistol and converts into supersonic hover jet. Whole lot of wording going in there. It doesn't say whole lot. Anyway, we'll take a look here at his stats. As you can see, they went with a horizontal bar graph this year. It gives his strength, intelligence, and speed as 8, his endurance is 9, his rank is 7, his courage is 9, his firepower is 8, and his skill is 9. So he is a very powerful Autobot. The only problem is, is I think he's a little overpowered, if you ask me. But now we get down to my thoughts. What do I think of Skyhammer? Skyhammer came out at probably one of the worst times for him to be unveiled. This was about the time when we were really starting to get some poor writing on these tech specs. So they ended up having to come up with other means to discuss about him. The IDW comic books points him out that yes, while he is a very courageous and valiant warrior, he tends to want to take charge too easily. Even shouting out new orders to anybody that would even be considered his superiors. Hence the opening that I gave him for this video. So in many ways, Skyhammer is a jerk. If he can't accept the responsibility of do your function and not go around and tell everybody else how to do theirs. As a toy, it's not bad. I find myself drawn to liking it a bit. Probably more so than I should, but I think I do like it. The robot, it's about what you would expect for a toy of this size. Unfortunately, the car mode from the robot, it's stupid. That's hands down. It's just too stupid to be acceptable. The inner shell, it's not bad, considering... I mean, granted, it isn't anything better than most of the other humanoid shells, but it does its job. The jet mode for it, it's kind of fun to play with that. I'll give it that much at least. It's about what you would expect for most vehicles of that time. 
I also had a lot of He-Man toys at that time, and that was basically how a lot of the vehicles were. A bit oversized in the cockpit so the guy can get inside it. So, it's acceptable. Especially if you were a kid growing up in the 80s, you would accept that easily. The exterior shell, the big plane here, it's not bad. Granted, could it be better? Absolutely. But a lot of what the problem with it is, is this gold plastic down here on the chassis. That I think we could have done without. Since, unfortunately, since that's a major component of the shell, if that thing breaks, well, your toy is ruined, to say the least. But, other than that, other than the majority of the gold plastic on it, and a lot of the other flaws in the toy, I still think this toy is about in the middle tier. It's got too many problems with it to make it a top tier toy. Because I know the gold plastic makes it a pain to find one even in this good a shape intact after nearly 30 years. And his characterization is a bit bland and boring. But, overall, if I had had this as a child, I definitely would have played with it a fair bit. So, the kid in me likes it, so I'd say that's good enough to go with the middle tier. Anyway, that concludes my review of the 1989 Autobot Ultra Pretender Skyhammer. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you like this video, drop me a thumbs up here on YouTube. If you're new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button down below to join our ranks. I also encourage you to ring the notification bell, even though YouTube's notification system is broken. But you can always check out the homepage on YouTube to see if I have posted new content. And also, share your thoughts about Skyhammer here in the comments down below. This is Sparkster1701 saying I will catch you all later.